What's up, guys? Today, we're going to talk about the Earn It Act, which is the Eliminating Abusive and Rampant Neglect of Interactive Technologies Act. It is this bill that is in Congress right now that people are debating over whether or not it should become a law that everyone who's using the internet in these interactive communications technologies is going to have to follow. Now, of course, this synonym and even the explanation of the synonym doesn't really tell you what the bill is about, okay? We're gonna have to actually get into the explanation of the bill and the actual wording and legalese to really figure that out. But but I can give you a high level understanding of it because we've seen this time and time again. It is the government trying to regulate encryption, trying to ban or put some kind of backdoor into encryption so that they can break it and so that they can see what the contents of your communications are. And you guys are never going to guess the reason for why the government is saying they have to backdoor or ban end-to-end -end encryption. You're never gonna guess. It's to protect the children. Wow, it's not like we haven't heard that one a million times before. Now, it's really funny that this keeps happening because the first few times that I've talked about governments trying to ban or regulate encryption, I pretty much explain it as them trying to ban or regulate math, because that's what's really going on. Encryption is cryptography, which is just a part of the broader subject of math. And when you hear the government trying to ban math or control the kind of math that you do, well, when you put it in that perspective, it seems really ignorant, right? How are you gonna stop that? You can even do cryptography with pencil and paper, okay? How on earth can you actually stop this or regulate it in a meaningful way? So I, in the past, would attribute these regulations to ignorance, right? It's, oh, it's a bunch of boomers in the government that don't understand how the technology works. But it's getting harder and harder for me to attribute these actions to ignorance, okay? I mean, this is something I try to do in my life whenever I see people doing things that are wrong or even evil. I mean, I would go so far as to say that this act or this bill is evil. I try to attribute that evilness to ignorance, right? Okay, people, they don't understand the technology. They think that they're trying to do something for good, but they're just a little bit misled. Well, we've seen this same exact play. We need to backdoor your encryption to protect the heckin' children over and over again. And it's been explained to people why it doesn't work over and over again, yet they keep making it. So it's starting to feel like they're doing this on purpose. So let's get into the summary of the bill here, what it actually says. So this is coming from congress.gov and links to the full bill as well as the summary are going to be in the description of this video. The bill revises the federal framework governing the prevention of online sexual exploitation of children. The bill establishes the National Commission on Online Child Sexual Exploitation Prevention. The commission must develop best practices for interactive computer service providers, for example, Facebook and Twitter, to prevent, reduce, and respond to the online sexual exploitation of children. Additionally, the bill limits the liability protections of interactive computer service providers with respect to claims alleging violations of child sexual exploitation laws. And finally, the bill makes changes to the reporting requirements for electronic communication service providers and remote computing service providers who report apparent instances of crimes involving the sexual exploitation of children to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Among the changes, the bill requires providers to report facts and circumstances sufficient to identify and locate each minor and each involved individual. The bill also increases the amount of time that providers must preserve the contents of a report. So now we're gonna take a look at the actual wording that is in the bill itself. So this is written in legalese. I'm gonna do my best to explain to you guys what it means, even though I'm not a lawyer, uh, but the full bill I'll have linked in the description below for you guys to read over it. So this 
part is coming from section four, duties of the commission. So the, remember, the commission are the people who are going to be reviewing these communications to see if it contains anything naughty, and they're also gonna be the ones in charge of making sure that online services are compliant with storing communications and that uh, you know they're able to access the end-to-end -end encryption to review what's going on. Uh, so section four, duties of the commission. One, initial recommendations. A, in general, not later than 18 months after the date which a majority of members of the commission required to be appointed under section 3C1C have been so appointed, the commission shall develop and submit to the attorney general recommended best practices that providers of interactive computer services may choose to engage in to prevent, reduce, and respond to the online sexual exploitation of children, including the enticement, grooming, sex trafficking, and sexual abuse of children, and the proliferation of CSAM. Requirements, alternative best practices. The best practices required to be developed and submitted under subparagraph A shall include alternatives that take into consideration, one, the size, type of product and business model of a provider of an interactive computer service, two, whether an interactive computer service is A, made available to the public, B, primarily, primarily responsible for hosting, storage, display and retrieval of information on behalf of third parties, including providers of other interactive computer services, or C, provides the capability to transmit data to receive data from all or substantially all internet endpoints on behalf of a consumer, and three, whether a type of product, business model, product design, or other factors related to the provision of an interactive computer service could make a product or service susceptible to the use and facilitation of online child sexual exploitation. So this is the part here, part three of section four that people like myself are most concerned with because all products that provide end-to-end -end encryption could be susceptible. They could be used for these horrible activities. Now. The vast majority of people who use end-to-end -end encrypted apps like Signal, Telegram, WhatsApp, obviously they're not doing this. It's only a very small percentage, maybe 0.001% of predators out there that are using these applications. And the majority of people are using them because they want to have privacy or even in the case of WhatsApp, I mean, that's just kind of how regular people communicate with one another, right? It's kind of hard to find a phone out there that doesn't have WhatsApp installed. And that's providing end-to-end -end encryption for its communications. Signal and Telegram are going to be used by a lot of journalists and whistleblowers because not only do those applications provide end-to-end -end encryption, but they also have a history of not giving up data, at least in some cases, to the government or they just give the government whatever they have, which in the case of Signal, I even did a video about this, is very, very little information. But again, what the provisions of this bill, when we're going over the summary of this bill, state that the controllers of these interactive technologies, the people who are behind these messaging apps, are supposed to do is give the government a way or to collect the information in a way that would require either putting a back door into end-to-end -end encryption or more likely it would require client-side scanning. So what's going on with client-side scanning is before you send a message, before you send attachments or anything like that, a program on the device is scanning it to make sure that nothing naughty is going on. And then if something is naughty or if they even just think that something naughty is going on, which is, I'll, I'll, exp I'll expand a bit more on that in a moment, but even if they just think something bad is going on, it gets reported and then it eventually makes its way over to law enforcement. So client-side scanning with end-to-end -end encryption completely defeats the purpose because your messages are scanned before they're even being sent off. The analogy that I would make is, it's kind of like if you take a letter to the post office, right? The post office kind of works like end-to-end -end encryption because the government's not supposed to open your mail. It's just 
but it's more of a trust thing instead of cryptography that you can verify to make sure that no one's able to break it. Uh, but anyway, post office, when you send a letter, kind of works like end-to-end -end encryption. Nobody is able to see the contents of the letter until it gets to its destination. Well, client-side scanning is like having someone from the post office come into your house and watch you as you write this letter or as you type it up or anything like that. They take a look at every picture or anything that you're packaging up to send to somebody before you put it in the package. And then they say, oh, okay, yeah, that stuff's all right. And then they let you mail it off. There's absolutely no privacy with client-side scanning. End-to-end -end encryption is meaningless if client-side scanning is going on. And like I said, this automated scanning for CSAM on people's devices or in the cloud is a problem even if you're not actually doing anything wrong. There was a story a couple of years ago of this family, they had a young infant son or maybe he was a toddler at the time and they weren't able to take the little kid to the doctor because of COVID. All the doctor's offices were closed. They were still able to talk to their doctor remotely. And so what their doctor wanted them to do was to take pictures of, I believe it was a rash that the child had and send them to him so that he could see this medical expert can take a look at him and then I guess tell the parents how to treat it, you know, maybe send them a prescription cream, something like that. Well, the way that the dad chose to share these pictures with the doctor was through his Google Drive. And Google Drive actively scans devices for CSAM. And it doesn't just scan for hashes of known CSAM, like files that you know are verified. There's no way to say that they're not, like we can tell from the hash at CSAM. No, they actually look at your pictures. It's probably some kind of AI or something like that. Will open your pictures, watch your videos, and try to look at what is inside of this video to decide whether or not it's CSAM. And that is what happened. And the person's Google Drive got flagged and somebody at Google even reviewed the guy's photo. So a human being went and reviewed what the robot said and they agreed with the robot because I think there was one picture of the guy's wife who was in the bed with a child embracing it and she had her bra off. So in this person's mind, and it's almost, you know, they're, they're practically acting like a robot at this point. They're really not using human judgment. Like I don't get how anyone could see a picture like that and, and not understand like, okay, this is a mother embracing their child. They see that and they're like, oh, well, she's got her shirt off and the baby's naked. So, oh, it's automatically CSAM. And they just went with what the robot said. I don't know why the Google employee did that. I don't know if they're just so stupid that they're a bot themselves or more likely they're probably just lazy. It's probably that the incident report sheet that you have to fill out when you agree with the robot is shorter than the incident report that you have to fill out when you disagree with the robot. Uh, so yeah, even if you're not doing anything wrong, you could be put at risk for this. You could end up having to deal with law enforcement and basically having your life ruined for a year and some change. And especially with something like this, your reputation can be ruined for a much longer period of time than that. So it's a problem even if you're not doing anything wrong. And the way that the government is going about doing this, again, I, I said earlier that it sounds really ignorant, even though at this point I feel like uh, it's not ignorance, it's it's purposeful malice. But the really ignorant part about it, the lack of understanding, is for predators that have, I don't know, some intelligence about how these applications work, how open source technology works, are going to realize that, hey, as long as the application's open source, I can remove any back doors. As long as uh, you know, my phone is open source, if I can install a, a different ROM to it or something like that, then I can make sure that there's no client-side scanning going on on my device, even Google Drive. So like I said, Google Drive is automatically scanning all of your photos and everything that's going on in there. But if you encrypt a folder and then put it in Google Drive, well, Google doesn't have that encryption password for the folder. So they can't really scan it and figure out what's going on with it. And this is how criminals, I guess the slightly smarter criminals and the slightly smarter predators are going to use these services to continue doing what they're doing. 
the government is not trying to stop predators in a way that is at all effective. And, you know, I've talked about this a couple of times before, and I'll just go ahead and float it here again, because it's, um, this isn't me trying to share facts, all right? I don't have a whole lot of facts to back this up. This is just anecdotal stuff that I've noticed from being around on this earth for a couple of decades. It seems like the free market is much better at protecting children. When I say the free market, I, I don't even really mean corporations. I mostly mean citizens, you know, individual people, right? Not an elected official or, you know, a cop, some kind of official who's from the government who's supposed to be in charge of protecting your children. No, the free market handles it better. And let me get into the specifics of what I mean here. So I watch a lot of predator catchers, right? These people who are, uh, you know, I guess like Chris Hansen to catch a predator spinoffs, but most of the time it's um, dudes with like, you know, a cell phone like this uh, confronting a predator after they've been talking to them on oftentimes these end-to-end -end encrypted apps where the catcher is pretending to be an underage girl, an underage boy. Uh, they lure the predator in. They get them to commit all kinds of felonies because if you're sending pictures uh, to someone who's telling you that they're a little kid, you know, inappropriate pictures, that by itself is illegal. So they've got them already on all these various crimes. They confront people and then they call the police eventually and Sometimes the police will arrest them, other times they let them go. It really seems to depend on, um, well, a whole number of factors. But anyway, I've seen that happen, and some of these guys have hundreds of catches, right? And they're, they're doing this stuff on their own. I mean, obviously they have to call police to actually arrest people, but they're doing the whole investigation themselves. They're basically handing them these predators on a silver platter. They'll have a... Um, They'll have like a binder full of all the messages that this predator had with who they perceive to be an underage kid. Uh, oftentimes they are guys on the registry, so they're repeat offenders that the police know about already, but you know they're not figuring this stuff out on their own. People are going out and doing the whole investigation for the cops and then just handing them this easy to convict case on a silver platter. And then on the other hand, I watch a lot of police activity. I watch a lot of, you know, body camera footage, like police directly going out and catching criminals. Very rarely do I see on the straight up police channels where they catch child predators. Maybe once or twice I've seen it. And, you know, obviously it's great when that happens, but very rarely are they catching child predators. So it seems to me just from my observation that the free market, uh, individual citizens, these predator catchers on you know, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, these people that are actually out there monitoring it, uh, and of course parents who actually take charge and make sure that their kids aren't installing apps, that their kids don't just have a phone and that they can do whatever they want with it. No, they're actually uh, administering the phone. That's what I think a parent should do for any kid who's underage. Uh, they are much more effective at protecting children than the government. And then don't even get me started on all of the cases where the government has actually gone out of its way to hurt children instead of protect them. I mean, of course, you've got Ruby Ridge, Waco. In the same vein as this, you've got Epstein Island, how many people from governments all over the world were involved in that situation? And then, you know, he went and didn't kill himself in jail, and then it got memory hold. How many cases have we heard of in the foster care system where the government, you know, there's the government raising your children, where there's all kinds of abuse, rampant abuse going on in the foster care system, where some of these places are being run practically like they're brothels. Same thing in the public school system. Okay, when you look into it, the government does not have a very good track record of protecting your children. Certainly not as good a track record as the community or even just parents themselves wanting to protect their own children. This is something that you're going to have to do yourself. And when the government comes up with something like the Earn It Act or really any kind of case, even when it doesn't apply to technology and they say that, oh, we need to put regulations on this to protect the children, 
it's false, okay? It's a way to control them, and in a lot of cases, it actually ends up hurting your children more than helping them.